there can be no doubt that the days of the retro throwbacks are far from over. As nostalgia continues to prove a powerful draw for many in both mainstream and indie markets, we seem to all crave games that evoke a bygone era or bring a series back from the ashes in a blaze of glory. Sometimes, indie devs can even rejuvenate old ideas with modern sensibilities, creating not only a loving homage to the past, but something that is truly special in its own right. Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk from developer Fred Brown is one such homage that takes heavy cues from adventures of old while hoping to bring something new to the table with some unique mechanics of its own. During Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk, players are thrust into the shoes of Mina, a young girl who lives in the world similar to ours known as Dawnside. After some strange and frightening dreams, as well as a surprising encounter with a monster in the woods, she finds herself in the world of Duskside, a blind land that is threatened by a beast known as Termina. Armed with a sword, spear, and some handy magic known as arts, she must explore the strange world and maybe even uncover the truth about what happened to her long lost brother. Yeah, it's convoluted, kind of but the story definitely feels like something from the days of the Super Nintendo. As a disclaimer, before I continue, this game's narrative is just but one portion of the entire saga, which is something I didn't know before I played, so any critique I give the game for its story may very well be rectified later on, and I accept that completely. But I was pretty shocked when the credits rolled after about three hours in, and with what the game had presented in terms of its narrative so far, I did find it difficult to feel engaged. Nothing really comes together in a way that feels complete, and the characters just come off as half-baked and underdeveloped. They fit nicely into specific tropes, but don't do much to expand beyond these confines just yet. So they do come off as weak. They may show hidden depths in later portions of the story, but from the outset, they really don't do anything to engage me within this world. Occasionally, the game uses wonderfully designed pixel art to illustrate certain moments. Other times, it just describes moments to you. And with that said, there's some creativity shown within these designs, but beyond that, they just feel sort of forgettable. The story isn't everything though. Sure, it can certainly enhance our elevated experience, but so long as the game itself is good, then that is probably more important. However, I don't think that Crystal Story sticks the landing here either and fumbles both on its core gameplay concepts. Drawing inspirations from 2D Zelda titles, one portion of Crystal Story sees you controlling Mina from a top-down perspective as she slashes her way through enemies and solves some puzzles. Along with this, she has access to her magical arts, which are usually used to stun enemies before you can actually defeat them. Different enemies require different arts to make them vulnerable, which sounds like a decent concept in theory, and occasionally the merits of this idea do shine through. It's actually incredibly easy to switch between arts on the fly, so you can flip your strategy no matter what foes you encounter. However, combat starts to become problematic when you're constantly shadowed by one particular enemy that just does not leave you alone. At first this enemy only hurts you, but later on it will teleport you back to the start of the dungeon, and even later it will essentially poison you. And the only way to get rid of that poison is to use a type of arts that the shadowy figure creature isn't harmed by. So now you have to switch to that only to switch back in order to attack the shadow as it descends upon you again. Dealing with this shadowy menace while other enemies are also out for your hide, encounters quickly become a frustrating experience. Combat is also marred by a lack of polish overall. When harmed, you are frozen in place for a brief moment and can't do anything until the game gives you back the controls. This makes it very hard to actually retaliate and wonky hitboxes of some foes didn't help much either. While you can move while casting a fireball spell, you have to be standing still to use the bombs which further hinders the experience. This also brings down some of the puzzle elements too, as certain sections would be far less aggravating if you were allowed to move and throw bombs. Puzzles, in general, are probably one of the strongest parts of the game, but I unfortunately felt like they were undercooked as well. Certain concepts are introduced to you, but for others, you're just flat out expected to guess. One particular solution requires you to know something about a certain enemy type to be able to solve it, but the game never actually tells you about this, or if it does, it doesn't make it as blatantly clear as it possibly should. It isn't impossible to guess what to do, but it feels a little unfair to withhold important information from the player. I don't really expect games to hold your hand either. I welcome it when a game gives you the free reign to solve puzzles, but Crystal Story doesn't feel like it cares enough to tell you sometimes. 
This is where I need to address the other gameplay style featured within Crystal Story. The boss battles deviate from the Zelda-style exploration and swordplay, instead switching to a turn-based system akin to Earthbound. These sections are aesthetically amazing, but the mechanics are just very poorly done. They hang in the balance between being too simple and too complex for their own good as there isn't much to the combat outside of attacking, charging your AP for arts or using items, but then charging your AP requires you to complete a short timed Zelda style puzzle section and dodge enemy attacks require you to do it in a similar fashion. Again, on paper this should be an interesting approach to turn-based combat. Other games have successfully injected gimmicks like this into their own systems to great effect, but here, all the roughness and uneven edges of combat and puzzle solving make the sections exasperating more than anything else. I found myself actively avoiding charging my AP since the one time I did use arts on a boss, the damage output simply wasn't worth the effort in the end. So I had to hit the attack option over and over while also focusing on the dodging portions. There are also a few other small issues that, just off the cuff, I found myself softlocked at one point and had to redo around half an hour of gameplay. There is no map outside or inside the dungeon areas, which isn't a huge issue at this early point of the game's life, but it could get troublesome as dungeons and areas get more and more complex. Entering a new screen locks you into place for a moment until the area name vanishes from the screen. I also got stuck for a moment because the button for landing your aircraft is actually the same button used to progress dialogue and the optional CRT filter often wouldn't stay on, despite it being permanently featured on the game's store page. Even after all this, I really think there's something good within Crystal's story. There's merit in its ideas, its concepts, and sometimes even its execution. The visuals are excellently crafted, and clearly a lot of love was put into them. The soundtrack is also fantastic, especially in the boss battles, but in the end, if all these elements don't actually come together, it just leaves behind a throwback that can't stand next to the greats. I can't recommend investing time or money into Crystal Story Dawn of the Dusk right now. In so many ways, it just feels incomplete. It comes off more like a demo that you have to pay $12 for. My sincerest wish is that the developer can polish the game into something greater because, for what it's worth, I can see the love and effort. I just think it needed a little more time to be a true indie gym. Noisy Pixel is giving Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk a 5 out of 10. Thanks for watching. This video is brought to you by our supporters on Patreon. Noisy Pixel is run by a group of gamers providing independent gaming coverage through news, reviews, previews, and more. Check out our Patreon to help support our continued growth and subscribe to keep up with all our future content. Noisy pixel.